Hello, and welcome to this episode, How to Connect with Your Light and Cultivate Deep Inner Peace. I'm Wendy DeRosa, and I'm so glad you're here. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe, and that way you can be notified when I have new episodes going live. You can also leave a review or comment. And if you're listening on Apple, iTunes, or any other podcast platform, also please subscribe. You can also please leave a review or stars. That also helps people access and find these episodes. So let's dive in this topic on how to cultivate your inner light and access deep inner peace is a is a big existential conversation about you and your inner interior. So I want to first talk about what I mean by your light. So in the energetic system, we know the light to be your soul consciousness and that your soul consciousness, your soul has a luminosity to it. It energetically has a presence of light and it in the energetic system relates to your central channel in your body. That central channel runs from the crown of your head to your tailbone. And that is when life force is flowing through it, which it is as a human being, life force flows through your body. The radiance of that essence adds a particular light to our physical form. So sometimes we can experience that light through powers or emotions like joy or elation or uh, heart-centered gratitude or connection and care for another person or even experiencing um, you know, someone's light bulbs going on, so to speak, in their eyes. It's like the light um, comes through their eyes or there's an essence of popping, uh, of, of, you know, of energy ultimately is what it is, but it's the consciousness of awareness that opens up for an individual in spiritual texts that range from, um, Christianity talking about the light within us or the light of God, or even the Quaker texts talking about the inner light or the yogic texts like the yoga sutras referring to the, the light within our system across cultures and across religions. There's an, there's a conversation. There's a, there's a, uh, an, an acknowledgement of this deep soul essence or the light of spirit that lives with inside our body. Now, I have uh, shared a lot on previous podcast episodes. In review, some of what I've said is that the, that the light essence within our energetic system is the true self. It's the soul within our being. And that we have particular layers of density or conditioning that will block us from accessing that deep inner essence. Now, that deep inner essence at the core of our being is a sense of coming home. It's a sense of, of I want to say peace, but we get to peace when we are in alignment. And that essence can also be uh, motivating, it can be activating, it can be peaceful and calm, it can be inspirational. But when we get to that state, that inner state of connection with our own light within us, there is a sense of coming home to our own body where it's hard at times to put words to the experience. The experience is very nonverbal, but what there is is a feeling state of arriving and allowing and returning to a very um, idle and original state of your being, your essence and your being. So why can't we dwell there all the time and you know, is it possible to access it? And that the answer to those questions depends on the layers of consciousness we might have 
that might protect us from that light, from accessing that light, or maybe life experiences that are part of our healing journey to let go of, to shed or transform. And so what happens is our energetic system carries density, it carries conditioning, it carries layers that we live through, life experiences that we live through that leave an imprint in our energetic system that might keep us from accessing a deeper state of inner peace and truth within our being. And it becomes our work to process those layers. But what I want to lo love to bring into this whole conversation, this whole topic, is the, the concept, it's, it's the teachings of the koshas in yoga. The koshas in the yogic philosophy are layers of our consciousness. And when I was introduced to the koshas in my early 20s through yoga, my own yoga studies, I think I've heard I was I have heard them taught and I've read about them probably at least a dozen times. And at the time in my early 20s and through my 20s, I had I it never sank in. I never quite understood what these layers really were referring to and meaning in the um in in the form of our energetic body the chakras made sense to me but the koshas were a, another uh way to understand the energetic system and the the system of the soul and so i want to talk about the the koshas somewhat in a way of reverse engineering this concept that we carry conditioning in our body and how to understand our conditioning through the model of the koshas. So the koshas, what are they? They are five sheets. They are five layers of our self. And that's our self with the capital S, meaning our human form and our spirit, our, our soul and our body. And they, the koshas start in layers that work from the physical inward to the soul in the center, as opposed to inward to the outer. That being said, our soul expands beyond our physical body. So while these layers may be layers, they may not necessarily be defined in these very rigid, you know, there is this layer and then there's this layer. Sometimes these layers interweave and that's true within the energetic body Our energetic system will interweave with the nervous system, for example, and other systems of our body. So First off, the first kosha is the Anamaya kosha, and that is probably the most tangible physical layer. It is the most tangible physical layer of our body. It relates to our bones and our muscles and our skin and our physical form and the food we eat, the, the way in which we take matter and take it into the body and our body digests that food and it creates a, you know, a response inside our body. We assimilate it. We, you know, our health depends on the food we're eating, the water we're taking in and how we are um, feeding ourselves and our body responds to that. That is the, the Anamaya Kosha. It's literally the physical health of the well-being and anything that applies to the physical bodies. That means movement, that might mean yoga, that might mean stretching, it might mean um, you know, and going to the doctor, you know, taking taking in nutrients, anything you would do to take care of your physical body, the anamaya kosha layer. And then we have the pranamaya kosha layer and the pranamaya kosha layer is another, uh, it's, a, it's a way of saying the subtle body or the energetic body. So again, we've got the physical form 
And then we have the energetic system, which is governed by prana, which is life force energy. So the energetic system thrives and survives on how much life force or prana we give it. And that is through life experiences that feed our soul or feed the energetic system. That might mean prayer, that might mean uh, nature time, that might mean literally um, energetic healing practices that cleanse the, the, the subtle body. When we move our body, and this is why yoga is um, more than just a physical practice, is that when we're practicing yoga, the, uh, the, the, the yoga asanas, the poses are not just about strengthening muscle and calming the nervous system. They're about cleansing the nadis, the, the, the meridians in the body to allow more life force to flow. And we do that in combination with our breath. So breath plus life force energy purifies the, the energetic system. The next layer is the Manamaya Kosha. And this layer re refers to the sheath of the mind or the mental body. But another way of thinking about this is it has a lot to do with our belief systems, our thoughts, and our mental patterns, and our conditioning. So it's another way of saying how our beliefs and conditionings essentially became lodged within our subconscious and how those beliefs and conditionings and subconscious um, experiences might affect the way in which we think, the way in which we behave, how we operate. It's our, in our way, our psychology that might be influenced by, again, the belief systems conditioning or thought patterns that started very young. That's the Manomaya Kosha layer. And then we have the Vijnamaya Kosha, and that's more of our intuition and our higher consciousness. So that's where our soul is communicating with our physical body. And it represents our higher mind and our deeper soul's wisdom. That's where the sort of the mind and body connect and we have a deeper sense of self-awareness and the process of trusting, trusting our intuition, but knowing we have intuition. And then the fifth layer going in deeper is the Ananda Maya Kosha. And this is referred to as the bliss body. So another way of saying this is this is the divine self. This is the deeper most core, the, the central channel, the aspect of our soul that is commingling with divine consciousness deep within our center and how we are fueled in the, on, on a soul food level. And how we access that deeper state of bliss is, is, the, is what the yoga philosophy teaches. And that bliss may also be your inner state of peace, your innermost state of union between your soul and the divine. So the question becomes here, how do we, through these layers, and we have all this conditioning in our body, access that deeper state of peace inside our body. So if I were to go through this kosha model with that question in mind, here's what I'd share with you is that first of all, the Anamaya kosha layer teaches us that our physical body matters. And in spiritual growth, it's easy to override the physical body and forget to move our bodies or practice meditation without you know, tending to the physical. And that even includes things like, you know, mindful of what, what we're eating and how we're taking care of our body with food and nutrients. You know, if we're eat, drinking Coca-Cola and, um, you know, having a lot of fast food, 
our body's going to feel that our energy system is going to respond to that, but we're going to have physical health, you know, repercussions in some way, shape or form, if not once, maybe over time of a chronic diet like that. So uh, Anamaya Kosha, the physical form teaches us that our body is matters in, in taking care of our physical body. Energy healing teaches us that the symptoms that we might have physically have energetic components underneath them. So our physical body sometimes can be the indicator that we need to go deeper into a deeper layer. So if we have a health crisis, then that's, un- that's alarm bells are ringing saying, hey, you've got to pay attention. You've got to go a little deeper. You need to start listening to yourself and realizing that physical health isn't just about physical. There's actually energy underneath it that's contributing to why we might have a physical symptom. And that takes us into the next layer, which is the pranamaya kosha. And that's the energy body. So looking at the energy in the body Energy, the energy body and energy healing teaches us that again, we have imprints inside our energetic system from our, our human experiences and from our soul's experiences that leave imprints in our body. And those imprints form blockages and where there's blockages, life force can't flow. And when life force can't flow, a symptom ensues. We get headaches, we get stomach aches, we have some type of physical condition that might occur because there might be some type of blockage. Now, this opens up a whole side door, which I won't go down to fully right now, but the question is, well, if I have this chronic illness, can I address it with energy healing? Um, Or gosh, Wendy, you know, I have this condition and I did all a bunch of energy healing and it didn't heal my condition. Here's what I would say is that when we have physical symptoms or chronic, like chronic physical issues, one pathway isn't the only pathway to healing. We have to look at it from a well-rounded scope. And so we look at it from medical and you look at it from therapeutic and you look at it from mindfulness and intuition and you know, looking at it from diet and all these different angles that we look at when we're looking at healing inside our body. So that's my sidestep here, but back onto the main track, the pranamaya kosha um, uh, aspect of us teaches us that what is going on physically is oftentimes influenced by energy and the energetic body and our energetic body will feel energy and we will have you know, blockages, so to speak, that do need prana. They need breath. They need life force to heal and clear. And so that's that's the second kosha. We're on our way to our inner light here. The next layer is the manamaya kosha. And I mentioned again, belief systems and conditioning. So the belief systems might be in the energetic body belief systems in your root chakra or in your gut, or maybe it is in the mind or the, the, the mental field of the body, but our conditioning, meaning the, the, the uh, systems we were raised in, the belief systems we were raised in, they get lodged within our energetic system and it becomes our work to heal, not just the thoughts, but where those imprints live inside our body. And as we clear them by breathing in and bringing awareness and intention, you can exhale and let that energy release. I have previous podcasts on how to clear energy, by the way. Um, You can check out some of my previous episodes, but for now, the um, in Manamaya Kosha, we are addressing the belief systems and conditioning held in the energetic system. And then moving through, once we move through clearing again, belief systems and patterns and 
old experiences that no longer serve us because we're evolving, we're processing that energy. And that's actually, by the way, therapy. Therapy is in the Manamaya Kosha field. Any aspect of mentally processing energy in the body. And does all therapy do that? Maybe not all therapy does, but even having awareness of connecting to old history and where we might feel it in our body is a form of energy healing. That's all within the Manamaya Kosha layer. And then we have Vijna Maya Kosha, and that is intuition, higher consciousness. So I've mentioned this in my previous episodes and in my book and all my teachings that intuition isn't mental. We have our intuition works in a minimum of four different ways in our body. We see, we hear, we feel, we know. Our body carries wisdom inside ourselves and so people will say, as I'm healing more, I'm becoming more sensitive or I'm becoming more intuitive. And I would say, absolutely. If you're looking through this, through the lens of the koshas, you're going past the physical and you're going into the subtle, the energy field, and you're processing and taking responsibility for belief systems and patterns that weren't serving you or worse serving you. And now they're not, and you're choosing to heal and let go. And yes, you are becoming more in tune with yourself. You're getting stronger in these subtle powers. That's the wisdom body. This kosha is about developing the, so the way in which your soul communicates through the consciousness of your being. And, and that is, again, a deeper layer moving towards the soul. And now moving to the fifth layer, the Ananda Maya Kosha, the bliss body. This is your divine center. This is your divine self. This is the connection at which it is. It is because it is. And you are in commingling with the divine fluid within your system. It's that flow of grace, that flow of light, that essence of pure joy. It's when the heart chakras chalice is overflowing with spiritual consciousness and light and the presence of you all again, commingled. It's the state of your true self, your essence, who you are and why you're here, your deep divine purpose. And that essence within you is the, is that, is the consciousness of this layer, the Ananda Maya Kosha. So it's a deep state of inner love. And when we get there to that inner state, it is again, a deep place of inner peace of contentment and of arriving in that place. And so as we are here in this part portion of the, of this episode, just invite you to just breathe into what all of that feels like right now, moving from the physical awareness to a layer deeper where you have an energetic body. And in that energetic body, prana flows, life force energy flows, and so does your breath. Which takes you deeper into the awareness that you are not uh, completely and in totality your belief systems, but you've adopted some. And they may have made you think and behave and act and exist and survive in the world. And just as I say that, take a deep breath and breathe that life force into that layer. That's a layer we get stuck in and processing. 
And that awareness that as the life force is flowing through you, it's rinsing through your body. And your breath can carry out and down through your grounding cord. I didn't introduce that in this episode, but I have many episodes where I talk about it. That awareness that through the base of your body and into the earth, you're letting go of something. And then you take that layer deeper into your soul's intuition, also called the higher mind. But it's the soul's awareness that feels and senses and knows and hears and sees. And that your soul may know deeply that you are powerful that you have gifts, that you sense things, that you're in tuned. And then as we take that layer of awareness deeper into the center, if you can imagine, sense, or feel that this beautiful central channel in your body is the pathway where the light of the divine meets the light of yourself. And that your soul receives that light. And as your soul receives that light, take a deep seat inside your body, your legs and your feet. into your grounding cord. And that you as a soul here are becoming more embodied. And the difference in spiritual work of finding bliss higher up and outside of yourself is that it can expand your heart wide open and take you out. Concentrate your energy higher but in the practice here in moving through this kosha model is that it's not about finding bliss outside of yourself or somewhere else or in a higher state. It's about going deeper into the light of your soul that exists within your body from the crown of your head to your tailbone and that you are deepening into peace inside your body. A few deep breaths right here. I'm gonna hold a moment of silence. So breathe a sense of coming home in your body. And the question that comes up is, how can I stay here often? How can I maintain this sense of peace? And my answer back is, it's up to you. It's up to you how you want to get back here, when you want to get back here, and to know that you can get back here. So as you feel it, more rooted in your sit bones and your feet and your legs. One of the ways you can get back here is by allowing this your grounding cord, which connects from your hips and your low belly and low spine and your sit bones and tailbone, and it extends down into the earth. And you can allow your soul to take that deep seat inside your body with the awareness that 
despite all your conditioning, your history, the story that you've lived through in your life, which was real. You know, it's not negating any or invalidating any part of it. Real life experiences. But despite it all, and along with it all, you have the ability to take a deep seat in your body, access the power of your center, your central channel, and sit in yourself. And if it helps, you can go back and re-listen and repeat the process of going through these layers deep within, back into the center of your being, to that fifth layer, Ananda Maya Kosha. And is it is it is there more work to do? Can you stay here forever? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Most likely we're human and we have to go through life and manage things and handle things. But at any given time, we might need to process something in one of these layers, either on the physical or on the energetic or within the mental body or within the soul. So I hope this model supports you in getting more connected to your light in the center of your being and the awareness of the, the koshas that help you deepen into the center of your being. Um, just know that energy healing is a process and this episode is a sliver of a larger conversation around energy healing. And if you have uh, any other questions about it, there are many episodes that I have offered up until this point. You can always go back and review some of the episodes I have to gain more context around intuition and energy healing. I hope this supports you in anchoring into yourself and cultivating your light and inner peace. And I will see you soon.